Okay. Good evening and welcome to the November 14th, 2017 meeting of the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen. May we have a roll call, please? Present is Selectman Scaziano, Selectman Whiteside, Selectman Slavin, Selectman Tietelbaum, and Town Administrator Derek Sullivan. It's an ongoing joke over people hashing my name, so it is what it is. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Cheryl Johansson, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Okay, I see you have quite a retinue of people who've come to see you tonight, Cheryl. So we're gonna jump up on the agenda and we're going to do under town business section A, we're gonna do the certificate of appreciation. So if you and your people will come up. Hmm? Have a seat, if you'd be so kind to all introduce yourselves. Cheryl Johannesson. Just grab a seat and put it on. Mail site manager in Wareham for Old Colony Elder Services. And I'm Chris McLaren, Community Programs Director at Old Colony Elder Services. Mary Beth Waldron, Essential Programs Supervisor, Old Colony Elder Services. And Becky Margent. My sister. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. We'll read the proclamation. Board of Selectmen, Wareham, Massachusetts, awards the certificate of recognition to Cheryl Johannesson. The Wareham community is made up of many members who serve the public, some in public, some in more, many more rather, in less visible but no less important roles. Cheryl Johannesson has been the nutrition site manager for the Wareham branch of Old Colony Elder Services for the past nine and one half years. Old Colony Elder Services manages 22 sites, and Wareham is one of the busiest per capita in terms of services rendered. Cheryl is also responsible for the Meals on Wheels program, a vital connection for many of our citizens to ensure their health and well-being. Meals on Wheels are delivered five days a week to those unable to attend meal services at the multi-service center, where approximately 20 people per day eat a nourishing and healthy meal. This past Friday, the Meals on Wheels program delivered 165 meals to Wareham residents. For clients with special dietary needs, meals are prepared accordingly. On holiday weekends, double meals are delivered so that clients will not go without. Twice each year, the program also provides additional food staples, such as crackers, canned goods, and prepackaged foods. The Meals on Wheels program provides each client many of whom are shut-ins with daily interaction with the meal delivery driver. If the client does not come to the door, the driver reports that information to Cheryl. If she is unable to reach the client, a wellness check is requested. Cheryl Johannesson has been a vital member of the services provided to our elder and disabled citizens. What better way to share a day but with a smile, a hello, a hot meal, and a little chit-chat. Cheryl and her fellow workers and volunteers in the Old Colony Elder Services Wareham program have provided a vital connection for many of our citizens, and we are grateful that Cheryl has invested so much time, effort, care, and love for our community's most vulnerable members. For your tireless service to the town and its residents, we thank you with the deepest appreciation. Presented this 14th day of November, Wareham Board of Selectmen, Peter W. Teitelbaum, Chairman, Alan H. Slavin, Clerk, Patrick G. Tropiano, Judith Whiteside, Anthony R. Scarziotti, Jr. Thank you very much. Picture time. Yes, picture. No, many let the picture. Gone, many do not realize how many Wareham seniors benefit from OCES programs. Last month, our hard working volunteers served and delivered almost 3,500 meals. Hopefully, your recognition today will bring a new awareness to the public so we can garner more volunteers for these important programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And it should also be noted that the program is very much looking for delivery drivers for the Meals on Wheels program. 
So if there's anybody out there who has some time who would like to volunteer, it would be, it would be very nice, very much needed. Okay, I guess we have time for announcements before the tax hearing. Any announcements? Selectman Whiteside. Yes, um, just a couple of things. Um, I just want to um, note for the record that one of the p people who has been our most um, constant companion on the Board of Selectmen, um, Jerry Barrows, and his wife have actually attended 47 years worth of selectmen's meetings. Um, yeah, they must exactly. have strong stomachs. Jerry's not feeling very well this week, um, and he's awaiting the arrival of some grandchildren, a, a set of twins, I guess. So I just want to say, Jerry, we are absolutely looking forward to having you come back and keep us on track, and we love you very much. Okay, what do we have? Uh, let's see. Actually, we really don't have anything of importance today. I think there's the Christmas parade is still for December 2nd? Yes. Yeah, from three to five on Main Street. Uh, it's always the, the first Saturday in uh, December. I'm sure we'll be getting a flurry of announcements for holiday activities soon. Yeah, we'll be coming because we'll be in and out. That's all for today. Okay, I don't really think I have anything either. Uh, oh, we do have one thing. Next week the board is going to be meeting on Monday uh, so that we can meet with the school building committee. Are uh, we meeting Tuesday yeah. as well? No. no. Good Lord. Um, and we'll start the meeting at 7.30. They start at 5.30, so I want to give them time to do their business first. Okay, 7.30 here. 7.30 here. So for the media, that would be you. Next Monday at 7.30, we're meeting with the school building representatives from the school building committee. So we're not going to be meeting Tuesday night. We will be meeting Monday night at 7.30 here. If you'll let your colleague know if she pops in. Uh, let's see, citizen comments. Mrs. Slavin. Uh, how do you know that's Mrs. Slavin? She doesn't have her glasses on. No, she doesn't have her, her glasses on, but I do have mine on. Good evening, Sandy Slavin. Um, I'm here as a reminder. There's a deadline coming up for submitting CPA Community Preservation Act grant request. They are due in the Selectman's Office Tuesday, December 12th by 4 p.m. All the forms and applications are on the town website under this community preservation uh, page. If you are doing some, you must be the owner or controller of the property. If it is for the town, it, you must have both the BOS and FinCom's approval before you even submit a grant request. That's one of the BOS's policy. You have to have prior approval before you can submit a request. Yep. 
Thank you. I don't know if the finance committee's meeting again before. Mm. I don't think then they that's are. Well, your pol the policy says both of them have to approve it before they can submit it. Well, maybe they are meeting. Um, if if there is anything coming from town departments. Yeah. But the yeah, second the Tuesday meeting. in December for spring town meeting. Yep. Um, do we have a deadline as to when the articles are due to the selectmen? Not yet. We haven't done the... Uh, Mid-February, early March. I'm trying to get a feel for when and we have to write our articles. Um, we'll have to close the warrant 40... We'll have to post the warrant 45 days out, so... It be the end of February. Just, I would say the end of February to be conservative. Okay. And... Oh, Christmas, December 2nd at the uh, St. Patrick's Church Hall is the Garden Club Christmas Fair. I just wanted to make the announcement ahead of all the other December 2nd in, um, events. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Uh, nine to one. Great. You'll soon be gone by the time the parade starts. Yes. Good move. The library also is having one on that day. Yeah. I got one thing. Okay. I apologize. We do have one thing. Uh, at when I was up in Boston today, uh, I met with John O'Rourke. He's also on the MMA board, um, and he was on the phone to the lawyer. We should have our electric program that we voted on six months ago, whatever, should be coming to the town end of the week, uh, most likely. So everybody is getting notices from different electric companies, plus Eversource, et cetera, trying to get everybody signed up. Uh, some of these. Uh, programs that you're getting really aren't deals at all. Be very careful. They, they want you to basically agree to have them represent you as the electric company. And so, the particular deal where we'll get a reduced rate for residents will be here probably within a week's time for as an option. Right. So there's a whole pro there's a whole process. They yep. send out notifications. Everything. So we should probably put out on the town's website and as alert the company that's doing it that we're working yep. with because it's been a it's been a bit a of long a, time yeah a delay so i doubt i can't remember the name i, I can't imagine anyone else would at this point probably not yeah. not only that but if i'm any indication i get a phone call a day from at least four other people oh, yeah, they're all like, trying to knock it off recovery, so. even though i'm on the don't call list that means you're on the call list actually yeah i got it okay uh, let's see. Nothing yet. Watch my clock here. No appointments, no interviews. Nope. Want to do some minutes? We have minutes? No minutes. Yeah, I'll move the approval of the minutes of April 11th, oh, 2017. We have one set, that's right. Yep. Second. Okay, motion to approve the minutes by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Scaziotti. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Did you check to make sure we were all here? Yep, we're, we're all good. good. Yes. Okay. Unanimous, 4 zero, zero. Uh, Let's see. Put another minute to kill here. Oh, they could mosey on. No, I can't come up early. Why not? Because you can start late, but you can't start early. Somebody could actually walk in at 715, see it in process, and they drop They don't a dime. have to open their mouth. They can sit there. Let's, let's do the request for science. Yeah. I've got a request for signs on town property. Toys for Tots event to be held. Can't be whatever that is. Probably at the Box Mill Hall, 158 to Hold It Road, Wareham, Mass. At. That's at? Yeah. Ooh, great. Uh, let's see. Second year Toys for Tots fashion truck and vendor holiday festival. Again at the Box Mill, November 26th, 11 to 4 p.m. So where do they want to put the signs? Town property, basically. They, they know the only place you can is the uh, second the bridge. Okay, motion to approve placement of signs on town property by Clark Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor say aye. Mm. Opposed, abstain, 4 zero, zero. So that's good. You second the clock is. Well, you can come on up and make yourselves cozy. Okay, it's 7.15. 7.15. All right, we need a motion to open the tax levy hearing. So made. Second. Roll call vote, Selectman Scaziotti. Yes. Selectman Whiteside. Yes. Clark Slavin. Yes. Heidelbaum, yes. The tax levy hearing is now open. So tell us why we're gathered here, please. The purpose of 
this hearing is to determine whether the town will continue to utilize a single tax rate for all classes of property or to split the tax rate, shifting the burden toward the commercial, industrial, and personal property from the residential class. All the values and conclusions are currently based on values which have approval from the Department of Revenue for this year. Um, the vote this evening will stand. Based on our current information, estimated tax rate um, will be $11.28 per thousand for the town. Our current um, residential ratio is 82.3% as opposed to 17.7% commercial, industrial, and personal property. That is a very slight change from 82.1 last year, 17.9. I gave you all uh, packets. Yep. Everybody has read. Is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions? No, just for the public to know that we're actually going in the wrong direction in order to uh, change a split rate down the line, normally the percentage you know, would be higher for a commercial to make it work. Yep. So the number's still out there to make a change. The demographics that we have in general are not conducive to um, a split tax rate. Um, the 80-20 share is the, the minimum division at, at which to look at that. But the other thing that we have to look at is the type of development that we have and also our, our makeup as far as our average values, both of commercial and residential. Right now, we do not have the demographics w that would support it. Most of our businesses, although we have a lot of new developments that are larger projects, are still the smaller businesses. Yeah. Dr. Whiteside? Just want to make a comment. I think um, that the presentation that I read was uh, very fully developed. It, was clear, it was concise, it was precise. Um, I'm hoping that it will go up on the town website once it has been approved. I think it's very informative for the public to know why it is that we are doing what we are doing. And I wanna thank you and your office. Thank you. All right, so it's clear that your recommendation is to stick with the single tax rate at this point in time, yes. as it has been in the past because we haven't achieved the 20% threshold. One of the of the indicators that we should start talking about it, mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of other things that need to be considered as well. But that's the first step. Right. So basically, uh, what I'm asking you to vote is for um, a residential factor of 1.0. Yeah. Motion so made. Second. Okay. Motion to set the residential factor at 1.0 by Clerk Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. Roll call vote, Selectman Scaziotti. Yes. Selectman Whiteside. Yes. Clerk Slavin. Yes. Title bomb, yes, 400. That will be the rate for the upcoming year. Do we need to close the hearing? Or wait a minute. You do. Is there anything further to be said at this point? There's nothing to say. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Okay, we have a motion to close, close the tax the levy hearing oh. by, select, by Clark Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. Once again, a roll call vote. Selectman Scaziotti? Yes. Selectman Whiteside? Yes. Clark Slavin? Yes. Title bomb, yes. Okay, it is closed, and now we get to execute this in front of her. Yes, yes oh. indeed. We should say hi to our town clerk. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Well, everybody knows who she is. Come on. <laughs> She's been around a lot longer than any of us have. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Just a few, huh? share that our um, new gross this year was 394000 and change. Um, our overall value increase for the town was 2%. Our single families are up 4%. And our average residential value is up $9,000 from 248 to 258 and change. Just mm -hmm. so you know, we're going in Very the close. correct direction, but not at a frantic pace. Nobody is. <laughs> And while we have Jackie up here, I would like to congratulate her on an upcoming accolade that she's going to receive. If you wouldn't mind uh, telling the Board of Selectmen what's going to happen, because I'll... Am I, is that enough now? Yes. yes. <laughs> You're just about there. Um, uh, 
Um, I am the incoming president of the Plymouth County Assessors Association. Wow. Um, so I'll oh. be serving as their president for the next year, and that will be happening in December. So well, congratulations. 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 <laughs> I've also been named a senior instructor from the Massachusetts Assessors Association. Wow. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. job. Wow. Nice yeah. job. She's going to be wanting a raise. <laughs> <laughs> going to? Yeah. Uh, there is a word that, that I would advise you to learn. No? No. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so what else do we have to do to make this? You're just here to witness our vote? I'm just here to witness your signature and then I'll... Something over there. You're going to sign hmm? it? It's not... I don't see the... Uh... Do you have the document, Jackie? Do you have the document for us to sign? Um, what I have um, doesn't have places for signatures on it. I think you guys are supposed to sign in Gateway. Oh, they, uh, they okay. submit it through Gateway. Yeah, so yeah. signing Gateway yeah. tomorrow. Um, so All right. I did print one out if you want to sign this for also for your print record. Yeah, so. Yeah, why don't we do that? Okay, so it's asking, my understanding is asking me to witness the vote. I go on Gateway and we come into your office and state that. Do it, yeah, okay. We come into her office? No, she just no. witnessed. Wouldn't be oh, she's going to witness. Well, yeah. I have to witness the vote. So that right. Can oh, just the vote. Yeah. Oh, okay. You state like that you had the public hearing and account. that you voted out in public. Yeah, get right. Set up and I'll somewhere. sign tomorrow. Great. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank gotcha. you. Okay. And do, okay. do you want to give uh, Marianne the, some good news that we heard regarding Bump's office? Oh, uh, you'll be getting a uh, call or, or an email from Bump's office. Uh, two towns decided uh, to fight the, uh, you know, the early election that we had to pay for. Oh, yes. Uh, as an unfunded mandate, two towns won. All the towns will be reimbursed. Yes. <laughs> Just announced it today. It's about time. Yes. That's funny. That's, that's good a, to know. That was something we were just talking about, so I thought you'd be happy. Yes, that's good to know. <laughs> awesome. Uh, thank you, Mary. Awesome. You. you should be thank getting you. notice from them. Thank you, Jackie. Steve, you look Great. good as always. Thank you. Thank you. Winning. <laughs> One at a time. Yep. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. We have the Department of Natural Resources for it looks like one, two, three items in a row. Mm -hmm. Good evening. No. Nope. Uh, next week as well. Yep. You will. No, you won't. Uh, yes. Why? Uh, oh, for Mr. Sullivan support. <laughs> stuff. Well, stuff has to go on the agenda through me, so you got to tell me. I can't just, we can't just, you know, make it happen by osmosis. We're not, we're not meeting this week. Are we meeting on Monday? We're meeting on Ms. Monday. Slavin, can you? Shut it. Well, that's fine. Window. Okay. It's not that loud. It's not that noisy out there. I can hear them. I'm guarding them out. I'm sorry. Concentrate harder. Never mind. Jesus. You're on. She sundowns. She really Good does. Evening. I um I have three, four proposals for you tonight. Um, first one is a review of our um our fees on our waterways and um, the launch service, things of that nature. Some streamlining, consolidation. Simplifying increases. Uh, these are all for your proposals. Uh, this is a proposal for you to review. Um, see how you see fit with this. Uh, how we can go with it. Um, to start off, obviously our harbor service permits uh, <coughs> involving the uh, stickers that you purchase for your boats in the water with moorings and vessels on docks um, hasn't changed since 2012. We've reviewed it. Um, we looked at how all of the other towns uh, provide uh, their, their fee structure. We still feel our fee structure is the most reasonable approach. Um, some towns do a complete uh, footage fee. Some towns do a flat fee. Uh, I was, I was uh, warned by numerous municipalities to not deal with the flat fees because we're, you may have a boat that's much smaller that doesn't need as much um, assistance in the, in the event of an emergency. Um, so we we do feel that this uh, permit structure, which has the fee for the sticker and then the footage fee, 
um, is, is still the rate to go with. Uh, we did increase it a dollar per foot, so we, the increase will go by the boat size and not the overall permit. Um, as, you, as you go down the list, you'll see the uh, proposed changes uh, for the uh, vessels that are on docks only are required to purchase the permit. Um, and we, back in 1998, they passed a regulation that locks the marinas into the bylaw, so we, we cannot charge a commercial rate. So when the docks go up, the marinas go up, the yacht club goes up. So we have to change the bylaw in future to, to match what the other towns are doing with a commercial rate. Are you, may I? Are you planning to address that before the town meeting? That's uh, spring town meeting? next fall because we'll we'll have to uh, break apart the bylaw and, and and get into it and do some public hearings and uh, go from it, go from there with it. So that that'll be the time we can reassess and go to a, a commercial rate. Uh, but as of now, they would they would increase ten dollars. Right, I understand that, but I was just asking, are you going to be proactive? Are you sure you wouldn't rather do that? During the slow season, yeah, really. Than the busy okay. season. Well, I, we can start breaking that. We we can start doing the bylaw through the winter because uh, I I would it would want to go to a fall town meeting, not spring town meeting. Cause so because it's going to go, we'd run it calendar year as opposed to the regulations would go. So into this effect. wouldn't go into effect until it, 2019 January then. 2019, correct. Okay, I was just thinking for your workflow. Yeah, in terms of getting trying to hold public hearings in the summer when you're out. Oh, no, no, I don't mind about the public hearings. We can we can put those in, um, but yeah. I definitely want to work through the winter to. Get it all in place, and then we can then we can address okay. it in public hearings and 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 go from there. Okay, so. that's fine. Thank you. So you want to do it on the uh, on the normal calendar year, not on the town fiscal year. Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. These are annual licenses. So that's how they work. Because yeah, once we start, when 2019 permits get sent out, um, we'll we'll have the policies the the policies and procedures and regulations in place. The fiscal year falls right in the middle of the boating season, so you wouldn't want that to no, be. No, no, it definitely is calendar. It, it has to be calendar year. To play calendar year, not fiscal. So. Okay. Okay. I don't see anything outrageous here. I'm looking at for a mooring holder, they would pay another twenty-five dollars uh, with the addition of a twenty-five foot boat. Right now, would pay seventy-five plus two dollars per foot times twenty-five feet is fifty. So they'd pay one twenty-five. It would go up from one twenty-five to one fifty under your proposal. Correct. The, um, you'll, you'll see on the third page I did a comparison from uh, basically uh, Winthrop to Westport uh, with the towns that actually have good operations. They, they manage their waterways properly. I found towns that are very questionable in their practices. So um, the average, I wrote down our average boat size is 21 feet rounded. Um, so we, I utilized the 21 foot boat to um, the factor in what the other towns are charging. We fall in, you know, below what the average rate is of what the other towns uh, charge. So you have towns that charge 60 and $9 a foot. You town of Plymouth uh, charges $50 plus $10 a foot, which is Wow, Plymouth is cha-ching, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, they, you know, they're factoring a lot of big, big waterways projects as well, and that, and that's part of the factoring for this, too, is, is picking up, you know, we, we do have a crisis with this pier at some point that we have to address. It's, it's a, a large project. Uh, this last storm destroyed our docks at the, at the Onset Pier. You know, it's, even with insurance, we're still going to have to flip the bill for this, and, and, I, and I honestly don't think at this point I have any other choice but to replace those docks going into spring. So... Um, you know, we're, we're going to have to make a big run at some stuff here in the next coming months. So For the pier, mm -hmm. just thinking out loud, would it make sense to amend the bylaw to allow a, a pier surcharge as part of a third fee in association with these? Well, I mean, you can, you can create the fee uh, towards the waterways projects as well. I mean, it's, it's for all of these things that tie into this, this agency and, and what takes place on the waterways. So. Um, you know, this will this will push up the rates a little bit to the point where, you know, we we need to start looking at engineering. But our our big run is going to be, um, you know, trying to get the grants to cover the the main costs of it. But with this, we're we're looking at um, about a twenty two thousand dollar increase in our intake mm -hmm. uh, with this fee structure change. Which is, you know, if we finance some of this uh, engineering or whatnot, we've spoken with a few different. Um, finance companies to handle this and and that kind of falls into the payment of any additional um, uh, anything else that we'd have to pay for involving the engineering so um, anyway 
you know, th $3 million plus uh, expense looking at it. So oh, no, if not more. Uh, you know, yeah, all day long. So 22000 is... In 150 years, we can pay for it. I mean, we yeah. can't look at, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to sit here and say, let's spend a fortune, and I know this isn't the topic that we're discussing right now, but, you know, the, if we're going to look at the pier, we need to look at the pier as a whole. This is this is just fixing the, the seawall or fixing the uh, bulkhead on this pier isn't just the deal. option. It's, you know, we want to start looking at stormwater. We want to start looking at, you know, uh, the, the, the whole utilities section of it. We want to look at the buildings. We want to look at handicap access. I mean, this, the, the ADA regulations, we, we need to step up to the plate with it. You know, it's the bathrooms, the, the pier, the, yeah. uh, you know, the accessibility is a huge, huge factor for us, and, I, and we need to address that. It's on our capital project list. So, I, you know, we'll keep pushing and do what we can to get this going, and, and unfortunately, it's a big project, and I know we have a few big projects in town, and unfortunately, this gets onto that plate, too. And we're going to get busy for 2020. Uh, yes, Plymouth. that's going to be. Have, we're going to have to look into that as well soon. So, sorry to get off topic. I apologize. It's okay. Um, going through it, uh, if you go down to the fourth page, you'll see the transient moorings. Uh, currently, we charge thirty dollars for our our transient moorings. Our mooring program has exploded with this new online uh, mooring program, which is called Dockwa. And uh, we're seeing rentals, s people signing up for uh, mooring rentals starting early as February, late February, March, uh, reserving for the summer, late spring, and coming here. And we've increased our, our, our amount of transient moorings that the town has. But we've tied in, we found that it's working better by allowing the launch service to be provided within that cost structure because it's, it's offering people coming into the town a um, uh, a safer way of getting in and out of the docks. I mean, uh, we're making more money on our moorings. The launch pays for itself pretty much. I mean, it's, it's a fuel efficient boat, so we're not spending a lot of money in fuel, and we're utilizing our staff that we already have in place that have um, launch operator licenses to run it. And this year we expanded it running uh, till 10, 11 o'clock at night and uh, midnight for the 4th of July weekend, and it was, packed every single time. We've increased again. We went from, uh, when we started it, we had 450 people to, to start it off because it Coast Guard takes a while getting permits out and, and whatnot. But um, the second year we went to 1,800. This year we did 2,400. So we, you know, we're seeing a, an increase here. And, you know, large marinas now like Onset Bay Marina that have been purchased by this major corporation, um, you know, they're advertising our launch service now, so we're starting to see more activities going that way, bring them to the marina, bring them to the pier. Uh, you know, somebody comes to the pier, they're hopping on the launch, and they're going over to Stonebridge and going up to the docks for dinner. It's, it's, uh, it's been really nice, so. Does this also cut back on the amount of dinghies coming off boats on shore? Uh, it does, yeah, so I, I think people are really, uh, are, are really digging the uh, convenience, it's just, it's very inexpensive. Like I said, it just breaks even paying for itself. It's the safety is, is the key of somebody climbing out of their boat into a little eight foot tender and then, you know, heading in at nine o'clock at night. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's worth the investment of going back and forth, so. Less stress on the dinghy dock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so the launch rate, I would, I, you'll see the proposed changes. Um, the, it would go from 30 to 35, and it would be a seasonal price rather than broken down. Um, it, it'll be from June 1st to September 30th. Uh, that's when we operate our, we have our launch operators, um, and we, we have it scheduled as that's the run time. And then we go an off-season rate, which would drop down to 25 because there's no launch service. And the Wareham River moorings would be 25 completely year-round because of no launch service. We're trying, once we saw what was going on with Onset, we took Dockwa and carried it over to the Wareham River to try and stimulate people coming into the river as well, so. But, um, there's no changes to, um, to the, the only one was the season pass, and that's all that is, is instead of a um, additional dollar per person for the season pass, it's just whoever's on your boat, there, if you have four people going out to your boat for the day, all four are covered under your season pass, so. And it's, it's pennies to provide safety. It's uh, shellfish permits on the following page. Uh, the rates have been $30 for, I'd have to say, at least 15 years right now. I, I 
I put in for an increase of 35. That's comparable to some of the largest surrounding towns uh, with us. Uh, the senior rate, there's no proposed change, stays at 15. Um, Non-resident, same thing, only a $5. Uh, for the one week permit, I'd like to eliminate uh, the June 1st to September 15th and allow it to be year round. Same thing with the two week permit. Um, and I'd also like to offer a one month permit, which would be only, it'd be for a calendar month or four consecutive weeks uh, for $60. That, that seems to be a, uh, an option as well from what some of the other surrounding towns are offering. I, I was gonna ask you why. You know, it's, I, I think a lot of it has to do with people don't get out all the time and they come down for vacationing. And, and I think it's, you know, for me, I, being able to go back and remember going out on a weekend with my grandparents and my family shellfishing in Marion when I, where I grew up is, is something. And I think it's nice to be able to have, let people have some options to be able to come down and go shellfishing. So. I'm, I'm, I'm not questioning that. No, I'm questioning that um, making it year round as opposed uh, to keeping it the seasonal. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a big seller. We don't, we, we sell maybe seven, eight permits a year. Um, I don't think there's a, there's a huge calling for it. And the price, is, the price is a little high, but it, you know, it, it does go into propagation and it uh, goes okay. from Thank there. Um, I've also, uh, item number 25, I, I, this is a new one for us and I don't think any of the towns offer this, but it's an educational outing permit, which uh, would cover if the Coalition for Buzzards Bay or a, a group such as the Boys and Girls Club or they could purchase this permit and this money would eventually go into strictly propagation and it's a $5 permit and it would allow them to harvest a small amount to uh, be able to take home and, and try. And we'd only be utilizing uh, one of the things coming up that area for that that practice itself. Um, we have a uh, we found it was better to have all of the gear available for people that get the weekly permits uh, because they end up going out there with shovels and rakes and yeah you name it they're out there with laundry <laughs> baskets so we actually own all of the gear already so we have it for 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 rent while they while they go out digging so a lot of people do have the gear some people don't and it's a very expensive to you're looking at eighty dollars for a rake another fifty dollars for a basket i mean it adds up quick and we have that so we have a smaller a, a, a lot uh, a reduced rate here which they can get it and they can use it for the week and if they need more rakes they can rent a couple extra rakes um and then they just, they utilize it and they return it to us and it's, it's worked out pretty well. So I just wanna lock in the fees. We tried it out and it's been, it seems to be a, a decent setup. What's your shrinkage? Uh, shrinkage, we don't have any at all. We, we, uh, we take all of their information and it all comes back. Thank you. Um, and the only other thing that we have is, I didn't, I noticed that we didn't have our fee structure set um, for the past few years on the commercial apprentice uh, permit, it used to be called a commercial student license. Um, it, it's uh, number 32 in the proposal. And that, I, I just wanted to set it as half the price of the commercial permits and they're allowed to actually harvest one bushel as long as they're under the supervision of a full-time commercial fisherman in town. So they would have to, they would have to get approved, they would have to be sponsored basically from one of our current shell fishermen to be able to do this. And it's, they have to be in school, they have to be, uh, they can't be, they can't be one o'clock in the afternoon during a, a Tuesday of a school week and out shell fishing. They have, it's, it's for from 12 to 16 years of age. They have to be enrolled in school as it, it this regulation has been carried over. Um, and then after that, they can go out and try this uh, this commercial harvesting. So um, that's all I have. If you have any questions regarding that portion, I just think that this is uh, this is a very again um, informative and I'll call it a clean presentation. <laughs> very easy to read. Very easy to understand. Got the public hearing. We don't need a public hearing. This is fee setting. Yeah, just fee setting. Yeah, we didn't have a public hearing before. Have you for talked you. to any of the stakeholders just to get the feedback? The stakeholders for will be affected by the fees? Well, I mean, the boaters are gonna be affected by the fees. It's just, it's just, a, yeah, it's just a review of, of our rates and what we have coming forward, so. Okay, I know we normally just set them, but just ask the no. question. Right. I'll make a motion to accept the Second. Rates. Okay, motion to accept the recommendations for 
fee changes by Clark Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4-0-0, zero, zero. it's unanimous. Thank you for that presentation. Moving on to the next, we have the annual shellfish regulations. This will be replacing the current regulations in place uh, from 2006. Um, that they were um, carried through from a, a selectman's meeting at that point. Uh, what we went through is we went through everything and cleared up a lot of the old verbiage and things of that nature. Um, we, it, before we had it listed as non-resident, it's considered a Massachusetts resident. Just just wording changes going through it. Um, it, it, it describes the uh, educational outreach permit that we talked about on section one. Um, there's no significant changes in this portion. Um, trying to go through. Um, basically, there was just there were things that were worded in a lot of the recreational. When you let me go back, when you go, went into the original book, it jumped around. It, it went from recreational to mixed commercial recreational. Then it went to uh, fees and fines and and how you how you process penalties and then it jumped to, to commercial and then it jumped to strictly scallop regulations so it was all over the place and and what we did was we broke it down to the point where your first portion is all recreational your second portion is um, uh, your second portion is all commercial and then it goes into um, it, you know going through your management areas and right. and uh, the general regulations of commercial um, and it goes like I said, right through, and then finally it, it ends with your your fines and, and your enforcement portion of it. Um, some of the changes we had is, uh, the, the, like I said, wording, the way one portion was worded, you could actually harvest, um, it, uh, what they meant to do was you can only harvest a peck of shellfish, um, and then they, they wrote it wrong, and it said, basically said that you could harvest a bushel of scallops on top of it, but they, they missed a couple words in that. So we've cleared that up, so now there is no guessing. It's strictly one peck or in lieu of, you can, during scall scallop season, you can actually harvest scallops. Um, the commercial uh, rates of uh, harvesting uh, amounts have stayed the same. The rates have stayed the same. Um, you know, we're trying to push a practice of, of people recycling the shell again. We used to do it, it was a big deal for, for the town where you'd go scalloping, you'd bring the shells, you'd go oystering, you'd bring the shells back, and then we util, you know, utilize that for propagation and putting on the bottom to build structure to try and catch uh, oyster spat or shellfish spat. So we're trying, to, we're trying to collect it in a new fashion. They used to have a shell dump. We're taking the shell because we already have shell piles set up and we have piles set up in different age groups because we have to clean them, we have to do all sorts of stuff, and they have to sit for X amount of time because we have guidelines through Division of Marine Fisheries so we can utilize that shell. Um, so we're trying to bring that back. Um, I've added, um, I, I've added one commercial location uh, which we're gonna have to request in the next portion. Um, Trying to see what else. On th one of the changes was the allowable harvesting hours. Um, right now, it was it said go to your local newspaper and find the <laughs> your uh, sunrise and sunset, and they don't post that anymore. It's not good luck finding it. You have to go online and find it. Um, it. What we ended up doing was going right with the daylight savings time, as long as it still stays in effect. And basically, <laughs> your harvesting for recreational would end at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, on daylight savings and at 4.30 p.m. on uh, during the standard times. Scalloping still stays the same, sunrise to 4.30 p.m. Um, we have the same commercial areas. Uh, it says recreational only management areas. That's on page six. We've eliminated one of the recreational areas, which will be coming up on that next portion, uh, so the commercial can get back in there and harvest. Uh, rainfall management areas have not changed. The temperature restriction has changed. We are, for recreational, we are stopping shell fishing at 32 degrees. It's, I think it's more of an experience in digging and replanting shellfish and leaving seed that freezes. I mean, it, the commercial guys have a lot more um, responsibility and they do bury, they, they, they clean up after themselves. So I've left the harvesting restriction you'll see coming up. But for, for uh, recreational, it'll be 30 degree, 32 degrees, and it, there is no shellfishing. 
Um, predator control is basically been cleared up a little bit. Nothing significant. It's just basically green crabs and starfish. They are, they're obviously, um, they can deplete shellfish stock. So this methods that all the towns have to, you can either take the green crabs, store them, or you, you dispose of them. Um, on to the commercial section. Uh, a little more defined for the permit uh, itself on who can get it. We've, um, we've eliminated some of the uh, wording that deals with gender and things of that nature, husband, wife, those are all, uh, you know, we try to clean up, make it more neutral. Um, the commercial apprentice is broken down a little bit more. Uh, it, it, just, it just spells out a little easier what you need to bring in to obtain these permits. Uh, the fees are non-refundable. Uh, it's pretty much all of the same. Uh, th when you get down to page eight and you get into the commercial permit types, it's a little more defined. We try to protect the fisheries through allowing harvesting if, for certain permits that y you don't want somebody just buying it that knows nothing about the, the commercial practice and going in. So they need to start at usually just the quahog permit and then they can, if they get that one year in and they continue it, then they can start looking at the, the, master, the master harvester permit, the, you know, the, the soft shell clam permits, things of that nature. So we just wanted to find that, that they can, uh, you know, after they, they've proven that they've can make it through this first one, they can, they can start applying for other permits. Uh, the commercial apprentice is, uh, it used to be called commercial student, you went to apprentice. We have, one of the bigger changes was uh, under the commercial is allowing the permit purchase. Right now, um, you're allowed to only apply for commercial licenses uh, February 1st to March 31st. Um, and then you can apply for a scallop one in October. We're the only town that has this. All the other towns have a calendar year. On our regulations, I would like to see us al start allowing, um, accepting applications for the previous year, starting October 1st. This, this way they are not stuck when shell fishing is low, then it, when they're, they're not making a lot of money during the, the, the February, March. December, Christmas time, there's a lot of exp other expenses. This gives them an opportunity to get a few months ahead and start paying into their permit for the following calendar year. Or if they get past that calendar year, they can apply for it any time, but it's only good for calendar year. Um, for the commercial fishermen that currently have licenses, <coughs> we would honor the extended period of time that they currently have on their license going up to the new uh, license, so they'd get a couple extra months on their existing licenses so we can get everybody on check with this new, the new payment system. So for the following uh, year's licenses. Um, we don't have uh, harvesting commission. Uh, the, one of the harvesting uh, issues that we had was they always had to have the square totes. They're, they're hard to come by. They're one bushel, the handles, everything falls out of them. I want to go back to allow them to use the the baskets that they used to have, and that they're just they're just common. They're fish baskets. They're the measures measurements are proper. Um, the guys know where they have to fill their baskets to. So, um, I'd like to see it. It's it's a measurement in, in square inches rather than dimensions. So we've eliminated the dimension um, uh, portion of that, so they can utilize regular baskets instead. Just easier to come by. Same thing as usual, the, uh, you know, the, the use of equipment, there's no hydraulics uh, allowed in town. There's gonna continue to be no hydraulics allowed in town. Um, their harvesting hours are, we, I offer them, uh, in this plan we'll offer them 30 minutes in addition to the closing hours because they have to get prepared to call, they have to come in from the shorelines, they have a lot more to do than a recreational shell fisherman. So on top of the normal closure times, the 6 p.m., the 4.30, they have an additional 30 minutes to, to make it into shore, which they already had something like that, but it, it, it playing with, with the uh, sunrise, sunset, now it's, it's a fixed time, and so at 4.30 they could be in by five uh, during the standard time. Uh, temperature restrictions, like I said, I kept them uh, 
to be able to harvest at 32 degrees, but they have to be in two feet of water, which they did previously. And after 28 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or less, it, there's no shellfishing. And that's, that's consistent of what other towns are utilizing as well. Um, priority control is the same, trespassing. And then you'll start seeing the quahog regulations, eel regulations, soft shell clam regulations. When you get to the soft shell clam regulations, instead of coming, having to come before you every year to do that, I put the regulations that we voted on in here with the, um, the whole list of, of areas that we do allow for shell fishing. It would be effective uh, October 1st through April, uh, April 30th. Um, and we, we um, I, I clarified the plunger regulation, which is a, it's like a toilet plunger with a long stick and a dip net on the side. So um, they would have to be six feet from the low water mark to be able to plunge in that way. They're not, they're not right up against the beaches uh, plunging the areas if they choose to use that, that uh, method of, of uh, fishing for soft shell clams. Uh, eel regulations, basically there's just a definition change and it just identifies the buoys that they're currently using to mark them if they're eel fishing for more visibility, permit numbers, um, uh, uh, flotation that sh they should be able to hold the next amount of, of uh, weight to the to the buoy if it's if it's got something attached to it so um, and we've updated obviously we had it at six inches for eels obviously the state regulation is nine inches so we've we've come up to meet the state requirements um, I have to say that's pretty much it we can't change any of the enforcement and penalty information because that has to go to a town meeting uh, vote to change no yep carried over so um and that's your bylaw requests mm -hmm. uh no actually the fines are the fines are pretty consistent through we don't see a need uh, to increase we're a little, no we're 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 right where i think we should be it's 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 enough to get your attention if you do something wrong again nice presentation good making sense you know putting it in an order that makes sense to everybody yeah and as we're opposed to jumping around this mm. will be put into a, in a into a booklet form we actually reduced the pages I think we're right at, we're at like 21 pages and now we're down to I don't know 15 yeah. so but you know our booklet does put in a lot more information too we talk about the species we talk about right. where you can get it there'll be a, a full uh, breakdown of it you know the definitions the definitions alone took up four pages and a lot of the towns are getting away from putting all the definitions and because it's it's just Paper. Cut and dry. Mm -hmm. So, okay. questions? I have one question. What, how is our eel fishery non-existent? Uh, they're there. I, uh, my well, I know they're I was there, the herring run out. I was well, not uh, but the elvers also. But I was I was digging through the. We were all our waders digging through the grass that that was jamming up right. the, uh, the the herring runs, and I grabbed onto this big. Bunch of, of stuff and everything's moving because it's filled with eels and then all of a sudden mom eel came shooting out of the uh, the pile with me so I had like this uh -huh. gigantic eel so they're there but cool. <laughs> that's good to know yeah thank you do we still have the issue with the illegal fishing for the elvers uh, yes yes we do okay yeah that's a uh, Ongoing thing. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're pretty, worth, they're they can a lot be pretty of dangerous. They're, there's a lot there. of money involved in that situation, but it, it's 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 declined. But okay. I mean, we're still seeing a lot of cases come out of this area. Um, it's uh, interesting. Good spot for it. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, agencies involved with it on a yearly basis. So. Move to adopt the uh, shellfish regulations as per Second, just quick discussion. Um, if anything turns up that uh, needs tweaking, you'll come back and. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Okay, motion to approve the regulations by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Clerk Slavin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Unanimous, 4 0 0. Okay, and. Last but not least. What do we got? Thank you. I'm sorry for taking up so much of your time. Okay, we're getting paid overtime. Yeah. <laughs> on the first map on the uh, second page of the three page is, you'll see on the left hand side it says delete existing management area number four. We haven't transplanted in that area for some time. It, it really doesn't 
Well. Doesn't do much. I, I, it's still a good spot, and uh, right now it's just it just restricts the commercial guys on certain times they can harvest. And obviously, we haven't planted in here in a while. We've been focused more on like Broad Cove, Muddy Cove, things of that nature. Um, and we're looking at a couple different sites as opposed to this one that they utilize point independence, uh, things like that. So, I. I, I feel that this management area, because we do have quite a few of them, this one can be deleted. Um, and what I'd like to end up doing is not going away with a number and moving over to the other shoreline to, to make a smaller management area, uh, which would be for uh, recreational harvesting as well as the educational outreach. Um, and that's the only location that that permit would be allowed to be utilized in. Um, with the fundings that we had received from Bouchard oil spill, um, the, the settlement, the, the, the shellfish that we're growing now from that funding can only be utilized for recreational. So this area would be obviously planted. Right now we've, we've put all of our um, 90 some odd thousand cohogs into this area right now and they're all netted. So we did that last week with the Division of Marine Fisheries. So they're in the ground growing, they're covered with predator nets. Another week we have to go out there, clean the nets. It's gonna be a, year, a whole year project. And that shellfish will be distributed as it grows larger and it can be unnetted. We'll plant in this area and then we can dig up the rest of it and move it to other recreational areas um, with, with the assistance of marine fisheries. They've actually been here with us putting out nets and, and whatnot. This area we also do have um, uh, 60, I think we had 65 oyster grow cages going right now with all of our uh, all of our leftover oysters that were in the upweller are now growing at the site. And they'll be, once they get to a size of um, just over two inches, we're gonna start transplanting them over to uh, other areas that have oysters. So they'll go right to natural, natural uh, habitat from the cages at that point. So uh, this year we did uh, 1.1 million oysters um, and we did 150,000 cohogs, I believe, or 100,000 100, cohogs. So. The uh, piece for the new management area, we have it? I can't quite see it. Are there any homes along that? Uh, there are no homes along that. That's the uh, okay. portion that... Um, Deacus? Uh, yes, Mr. Deacus previously, uh, the, it's the adoption with the, the Buzzards Bay Coalition. It's okay. at, it, their dock is actually the pier that um, they're utilizing is going to be the southerly border of that management area and I then going it. north. See it. But there won't be any, uh, it, there won't be any more cages that, to what we have there. Um, and the shellfish, is, the, the rest of the shellfish is actually planted subtitly so you don't even see it. You know, it's a good location when you look at where Wicked's is for them to go across and you know, do the outreach program. That's I gotta tell you, we had the, we brought the Boy Scouts out this year on top of what the uh, Buzzards Bay Coalition has been doing, and it was it was just great to see a bunch of kids out there and their their uniforms, and their their parents are out there with them, and they're they're just trying to dig shellfish. It was it was really nice to see. So it's nice. Oh, cool idea. It's a uh, nice change from sitting in front of a video game to getting them out on the shore here. So on the second, on the last page is a little more defined. Um, just I, the second page just kind of marked out the area where we were going to move it to. But the, the other, the, the the third page is actually the, the the more formal boundaries that we have to place. We'll have markers out in the waterways so you'll you'll know it's within that area. Uh, and I believe the entire area that square comes up to 5.05 .05 acres. So give or take. Um, so it'll be marked. And who can, can you moor a boat there? Yes, there, there won't be any problems with the boats because the actual areas that have shellfish growing, we have corner markers, so you'll, they're, they're, they're just markers when it's written that it's a, it's a um, propagation area, so they not to drop anchor. And we try to keep it as close to the rocks as possible because that deters boats. Okay, so say that again. You said yes and no. Oh, boats can come right in there, yes, absolutely. Can you drop anchor in there? Yes. But there's not a lot of water, and there's a lot of little rocks everywhere too. Right. So, so but why anchor. would you want to? People utilize it all the time. They go over with their little um, little um, uh, dinghies and uh, the oh, coalition. Sure. They they tie up at the, the the pier to bring their their uh, their outreach programs there, and they run that. That's where they run their sailing program out of. No, I'm I'm talking about me. Yeah. Or oh, you can yeah, you can drop anchor right there and go harvest shellfish. 
I, I, it, this area will still remain open to recreational. They can still harvest That's, there. Okay, that was the question yeah. that I no, was they, they, having trouble. We're not stopping recreational. Yep. Okay. We cut down the days. It would be Thursday, uh, Thursday through Saturday yep. to harvest. And then if there's a program going on, they can utilize it any day during the week. So. Okay. Right. But where we're planting, it would just be nice to kind of keep some of the stock there. Move it. I think we had a motion by Selectman Whiteside, second by Clark Slavin. All in favor say aye. Opposed, abstain. Okay, we've eliminated one and created another. Yep. Thank you. Quick question for you, Gary. Onset Island, we've talked before about some of the issues over there. That have been going on for about 80 to 100 years. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, no, I, yes, it's, uh, there's, there, there's a, um, We're not going to make any friends. No, no, but I mean, it's, it's, it's getting out and, talking I, I'm going to be uh, posting a sign up at the association boards letting them know and and uh, we've had some other other issues come out of that area that um, have sparked some interest and in debate with some of the people that are um, aware of some situations yeah, there. like to fuse the recreational versus commercial yeah so, Mr. Chairman, before we lose uh, Mr. Buckminster, he's going to do it during the TA report. We, uh, if you remember, back uh, back in spring, right before town meeting, we were hit with a little bit of a shock from the Carver Marion Wareham Refuse District. How we satisfied it for this fiscal year was we took ninety thousand dollars out of free cash to be able to pay for this year's assessment. Next year. Next year, we cannot do that. We don't do that. You know, the, the, it was it was such a last minute thing, so um, we sort of eased up. But the uh, we're going to have to talk about the stickers. Um, we said this in spring; they'll have to be most likely separated. Yep. And uh, you're going to need a, a sticker directly for the dump. And you're going to need one for the beach. Now, it used to be that way where there were two separate stickers, consolidated them how long ago? I, I think what I'm going to end up doing, and I, I, I won't get into too much of the proposal, but excuse, I, I'd still like to uh, keep uh, a combination sticker. So if you need the dump and you need the beach, you can buy that sticker for the same price as if you would, you know, were buying the two stickers separately. And that way, cars aren't loaded with stickers all over them. So we'd have the option of if you just want the beach sticker, you just buy the beach sticker. If you just want the dump, you buy the dump. And if you need both Problem. of them, yeah. You, you know, yeah. So just to simplify it and not, okay. you know, we don't want to. Well, we're coming up on next year, so yeah, this is a discussion that will have to take place pretty quickly. Yeah, because the Monday I actually didn't I think realize the selling season starts in December, December couple 15th. weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah, because I I stopped uh, when we we found out with the CMW issue, we did stop the sticker production until hold off, but it's going to be a rush to get everything in place, but we'll do it. So How do you figure out what the rates are going to be? Do they have to go up? Yeah. yeah they are well, going to have to go up. We've got to wait till Monday. We don't want to get into yeah. too much yeah. of a discussion yeah. on it. No, it's just not on the agenda, so let's yep. wait until we get proposals from the town administrator and from the harbor master and review them on Monday. Yeah, it's, I feel horrible having to bring this up. It's just... It's uh, okay. It is what it is. We can do what... I, it's the best Circumstances beyond our control, yeah, so... I'll, I'll bite my tongue on the rest. So. Yep. Okay, we'll wait to hear from you gentlemen on that. And I'll, so it will be a review and vote of beach slash transfer station stickers. Yep. Will be the agenda item. It will. Okie doke then. Thank, thank you, you very much for your time. Yep, thank you for yours. Nice care. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Compacts. Yeah, we have the community compact initiatives. Uh, Again, I apologize for not getting this out to the board before, right before the meeting. Um, I'll ask the town administrator what he, his preference would be amongst the one, two, three, four, five that were sort of referenced in Director Buckland's correspondence here. Uh, so if you remember, we did sign up for two things. One was best financial practices, and then the others was basically the preparing for success. Uh, we received financial guidance from the uh, from the Commonwealth on that, and we also received the 43D expediting permitting. So now's the next stage, and we came up with, um, from what we've been hearing, we whittled down 
to about uh, th or five main items. Uh, the first one is basically with the Carver Marion Wareham Refuse District, uh, knowing that that will be shutting down by 2020 and uh, the assessment, that means that all our trash will be going directly to CMAS and we're probably looking at roughly a three quarter of a million dollar charge to the, to the town to continue that. So we need to come up with, uh, with a plan, or potentially an alternative plan. And uh, we can also work with, uh, the, with the state on this, not just through the community compact, but through some of the alternative services as well. So that's when you see develop waste contracts that are fiscally, environmentally, and otherwise beneficial to community. I think that we can merge that with uh, some state options. That's why I think that's probably one of the most important things we're going to, we're going to need to do. Now, mind you, we can only sign up for two. Well, it's something that we need to be proactive with. Yeah, what because other? what's going to happen is it, any dent that we've made in terms of educating the public about Trash, just kind of. Yeah. Um, trash. Putting our head in the sand isn't going to help no. solve this no. one. No. We got I a mean, really, this is, this is, this is really important. Um, What's your second recommendation? It's the prepare an urban renewal plan application in accordance with MGL Chapter 121B in partner with the uh, urban renewal entity. That is something that we have needed for Long decades time. now. And that is what is going to help us move forward with the new redevelopment authority and one of the main items for the town. Okay. So the next ones we have is, as you know, we're going to the uh, green community. So this is complete an energy use baseline so that the community can set goals and track performance. We did get the uh, initial grant through them for uh, technical assistance. Then after that, we have the Undertaken Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, self-evaluation, develop a transition plan to comply with federal civil rights laws that require public buildings to be accessible to persons with disabilities. The, uh, through um, the CDBG grant, we're already moving forward on something similar, albeit not the, as fast as some would like, but. We're getting them. Okay. Um, and then the last is implement the complete streets program by becoming certified through Mass COT and demonstrate the regular and routine inclusion of complete streets design elements and infrastructure on locally funded roads. We don't. I, I would go with one and two. One and two. Okay. One we really don't have a choice on. No. And I don't see that we have a choice in two either because it's really essential to everything else. Yeah. It's. The next steps we want to take in, you know, and helping shape the community, that's going to be a key element. Yeah. Right. Okay. Is everybody in agreement with this? Yeah. I mean, you can't do five, you know, because it, it just doesn't work. You can't, you can't afford it. it. Can't it's afford not even that. It's just you can't yeah, do we're it. We're not Belmont. We're not a biking community. We're not of this. We're not of that. Well, it's not even that. It's just we don't have the ability to, to absorb it all. Right. right. No so it would be you receive a small grant to offset and it's very nice, but the, the, your costs to attain that are so astronomical. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, to drop in the bucket. Okay, can we have a motion to request? Uh, so moved. The Director of Planning and Community Development, Development. to go ahead. Uh, with one and two. With, with, with best practices one and two, waste contracts and urban renewal. Great, thank yes. you very much. So we have motion by Selectman Whiteside, Second. seconded by Selectman Scaziotti. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, abstain. Okay. 4 0 0 unanimous. Okay. Gary's still oppressed. Hmm? Yeah. Gary's still oppressed. Yeah, he is. Let's come back in and update them on that. Um, large scale capital needs. I don't think we have anything per se to talk about tonight, uh, but it's going to just stay on here for when we do have things. Yep. We do have the meeting next week with the representatives from the school building committee who are going to come uh, so that we can talk about where they are in the process, uh, hear what locations they're looking at and so on and so forth. Yeah. Is there a way that we can put 
the things that are on the table on a website? Informational only. You no. know, um, um, well, eventually, eventually, I think we should. Um, and not that we're making decisions on them, but these are the things that have been brought up. And somebody may say, oh, yeah, but you forgot the um. I mean, that's, you've got the capital plan document that's on. But the capital that's plan on. document really doesn't address the things that, that we kicked into gear last week, I don't think. Was it last week or the week before? Yeah, they're all there. They are all there? Oh, yeah. And the then schools, some, the pier. Oh, okay. Right. Some of them are separate. that may be combined into one overall, but all right. they're, okay. they're all there. All right. They still have a separate column on that for extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Or so, I think that's a great way to put it. I think that we called them dreams last time. <laughs> All right. I think you called them pipe dreams. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, vote to approve the open space plan. Are we clean on that yet? No. No. Okay. We need to get that done. It's, it's really dragging. I will make a motion to accept it. Subject to the edits that Mrs. Slavin has promised will be made. She has a copy of them. I have a copy of them. The editor has a copy of them. Mr. Buckland has a copy of them. And some of them are factual errors. Does anybody have a copy of said document with them tonight? I did not bring mine. I did not bring mine. I didn't bring mine either. You have one too? Well, oh. he, because he would have gotten hers. I hand delivered her one with all of the edits at all your right. request. Typically, I would want that in the minutes, but that's okay. Um, you want to wait till Tuesday? No, let's just get it done. Reference the document. We seem to be in agreement as to what the. Well, no, she just had her hand up. Are you requesting I a. It. Oh. I saw this. Are you swearing? requesting a. Do we have a Bible? Swear? Or a pinky swear. Yeah. 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 Would no, you, I'm would requesting. Would you care to come up for a pinky swear? No, we understand. All right. So a conditional mo motion with conditions Second. by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Clerk Slavin. Mrs. Wilson has a copy of the document. I left a copy with her. Okay. Thank you. So therefore, I'm not pinky swearing anything. I'm tired of this document. Apparently not, because you're still talking about it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, I make abstain, motion. four zero zero. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see, 48 hour business. Do you have any Selectman Scaziotti? Do you have any Selectman Whiteside? I don't think so, thank you. You're on. Okay. Uh, regarding this Woodland Cove project, actually, I'm gonna wait till the media comes back in. Well, why don't, why no. don't one of us go get them? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can just move on, there's just one item. For yeah, why don't we let him start his report? Yeah, there's, uh, because this might, uh, this should probably develop some debate. I received a uh, application, um, community preservation application request for town property, and that's from uh, Mr. Patrick Lester, and that's for the uh, tennis courts uh, over in Onset. Uh, it's uh, I guess the, the Richard Brown tennis court renovation, and it's roughly a $25,000 to $50,000 request. And I think we need to start talking about what's the the future of these these items and such because they they come up basically all the time. It's a we it's do. a neat concept. I mean, the, with the uh, the tennis courts renovating and pickleball courts, it's talking about the multi generational aspects. But it's um, you know it's something we really need to consider because we also. We're talking about the band shell in the future. We're talking about there's there's every single thing that's uh, that's popping up, and a lot of them, um, you know, we've we've just gone through some really. The Oakdale has a great uh, great playground now, which is something that's. Uh, and Lukey. Yeah, Lukey has a good great one as well. So. We we will you know one of the things we kept talking about and just haven't gotten done is to meet with the open space committee as well as the director of municipal maintenance sit down and figure out logically how many of these recreational areas the town can maintain and come up with with a plan come up with the locations uh, it's great that groups are popping up in the community to renovate playgrounds and offer to help and, and that's it's great to see the community involvement but at the end of the day 
at some point the resources of the municipal maintenance department will be implicated and we need to know what we can handle now what we think we can handle in the future and try to plan accordingly so I would and I would also suggest that some of this needs to go in the master plan in some form Absolutely. Uh, so while I, while I appreciate somebody's initiative and coming up with an idea, it might be something that we'd want to hold off on, at least until we can have that conversation with, with the others. Mr. Whiteside? Yeah, we've asked for that um, discussion. Well, we haven't forced it. It's just as much on them as anybody else. So, I mean, just as much on us as it is on anybody yeah, no, else. And I just, um, you know, the, the Oakdale and Lukey projects were learning experiences for the town as well as mm -hmm. the community. I mean, the local communities where those playgrounds are located. Yep. Um, there is, as you know, a major fundraising effort going on to the Lopes Field, which is truly a community playground as opposed to a neighborhood playground. Um, and I can give you definitions if you'd like, but. Well, that's okay. Um, if you look at the geography of the of the town of Wareham, I think that's one of the things that we want to be looking at is mm -hmm. where geographically are these playgrounds or recreation areas located, and they also need to be rec the um, open spaces that we have and the the conservation lands that we have. I mean, truly, the open space product that we just okayed has an enormous amount of information about what is where, what its condition is. Um, and so, having read it, so. <laughs> I mean, I, I would urge you to, to look at that too and to you know, maybe ask the, the director of municipal maintenance, look at it. Man, most of the conservation areas, the town does not take care of, nor does it have to. But if you have a recreation area that borders on a town location, does that impact it negatively? Does it impact it positively? You know, that kind of thing. Yep. No. I know that the Open Space Committee has, because I've asked them, um, is uh, not happy about what we'll call, um, you know, putting them in order or prioritizing them at all. No, but I think unfortunately the fiscal reality is that we have to do something like that. I understand that. So I'm we have, but we need to have that discussion and, and make those decisions. Um, well, can we put that on the agenda for next week? No, I don't want it next week. I think we're going to have a lengthy next week. I don't want to put too much stuff on because uh, I well, think then you the, have the, two weeks of us short. Hmm? You have two weeks of us being short. No, somebody will be here for who's going to be missing the first week in December. It's me, and then it's him. So we have to go into either January. Yeah. I think also on the... Uh, All right. I mean, I, I can call in, but that's... Yeah. On the Hammond... If you can call in. I can call in. On the Hammond discussion, we need really to look at that whole piece of property and yep. figure out what's a sustainable project long term. If we take a piece and use it of land, it may affect something else we need that would be better overall long term. So we need to be very careful there. No, well, again, this is just a proposal, and remember, uh, where that's under the control of the town administrator, he would have to be the applicant here. Right. So he's just feeling us out on it initially, and I think he's probably getting the sense that, you know, trying to get something in to meet the Community Preservation Committee's tight deadlines that we learned about tonight might be a little bit of a rush for this time around. I just think we need the long-range plan. Yeah, we do. We do. And, yeah, okay. Yeah, and there's and people need to realize there's certain things like the the Hammond property over there when that was taken by eminent domain it was for recreation and park and playground right. so you just can't slap any old thing on there but this like is a fire also, station perhaps like a fire station okay there's also um, a um, educational restriction on the property on the yeah, Hammond well, school yeah, property. yeah there's two Hammond separate property. lots right there. I know yeah. but they are adjacent so. right and there's also you know there's a playground that's existing there that's um, you know, in memory of uh, the two two special young girls, and there's a lot that needs to be considered. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. All right. I'll I'll put it on the agenda for next week. I guess. Um, well, actually, I'll talk about it with you. you. I kind of wanted I kind of wanted the focus next week to be the the school thing, 
we're kind of stuck out of necessity with doing the, well, we the have fees. To yeah. So I, I was just kind of lim trying to limit. I would do it, Peter. I think the sooner that we get that that discussion, well, I've got to get some. Open. Well, that's fine, but I always got to give them some notice to get in as well. So we're going to have a special day meeting for the all the licenses we have to vote on for the first of the year. That's just going to be the second. We do that the second week in December. Yeah, they're all set. She's Those are easy. You just vote by category ahead. anyway. So, no, that's, but no. that's that's ten minutes. Yeah. Once I figured out that we could just vote by category and not have to read every single one into right. the record, it was okay. made life a lot easier for us. Um, well, I'll, f I'll figure it out. I, I gotta, I'll, I'll reach out and see who's available when. It may not be next week. It may be the week after, so you may need to call in, depending on what the responses I get. Uh, and it's, uh, I do want to put it, Mr. Lester did not wait till last minute. He'd spoken at town meeting and then- No, I get it. Trial, no, so it doesn't last minute not, from him. Yeah, it's not as- no. Not by any stretch. We appreciate his interest. Uh, I do have an item of 48 hour business. Um, I was finally able to see the project eligibility letter that was sent by the State Department of Housing and Community Development in regards to the Woodland Cove project. I was appalled to see that the state believes that 80% of these units down there will be affordable. When they came in here, uh, in the summer and told us that they were looking for 60 percent affordable. In recent weeks I've also seen correspondence from a project engineer discussing whether uh, what the infrastructure would be available for 120 single family or 121 bedroom units and an additional 120 two bedroom units. We were told this would be 174 units total. I'm not a math major, but 120 and 120 equals 240. So there seems to have been a fair amount of bait and switch between what we were told and what under the law and the regulations we were allowed to send to the Department of, Community, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development with our thoughts on this project and what was actually presented to DHCD. We've also been told by the applicant that we should disregard this first project eligibility letter and there's a second one coming. So I have no idea what the heck they submitted to DHCD. There was some outreach to DHCD today. I want these people back in before us to start the process anew because frankly, nobody knows what the hell it is they intend. And in order for us to have our say with DHCD, we have to have some idea of what the project is. Now, if they were talking about cutting two units or adding two units, nobody would care. But going from 174 to 240 is significant. Uh, changing the affordable percentage by cutting the amount of market rate housing that they intended in half is significant. And so we've uh, learned from DHCT, DHCD today that we can in fact sort of summons them back in to start this whole thing anew and we will be doing that. Please. Yeah, we're not country bumpkins here. Hmm? Yeah, well, I mean, something like that is almost ministerial. I can sort of let something like that go, but when you're talking about, you know, half of the number of affordable units and, and the bumps that they were talking about and the percentages, it's just, just not something we can swallow. you need a motion from us to do something? I would like to send a letter to them uh, stating my, my dismay and that they are to come back in. The board, we authorize you. Second. Okay, motion to authorize a letter by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Clerk Slavin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. We also should send a letter off to MassDOT for the Route 6 and 28 project to let them know that there's been a major change in potential project oh, because yeah. they have That's no idea what's going on because the traffic impact at, at that intersection That's there on Redbrook is gonna be completely different. Yeah, yeah that may be something that's really good. That may be something that the, uh, that the ZBA will take up in the form of traffic studies. But, wh I, but why not put DOT on notice? I'll copy them on yeah. my letter. Yes. Yeah, excellent. And that should be sufficient. I believe I did that the last time around. Pam Hasner, Mass DOT copy. Yeah. So. Do we send a copy to Pacheco? Can. Copy to Pacheco? Oh, there'll, there'll be copies everywhere. Don't you yeah. worry. Thank you. I might even copy the governor. I'm so aggravated. Um, 
All right, liaison initiative reports. Nothing from Selectman Scaziotti, Selectman Whiteside? Um, you, I don't. Did you initiate anything this week? I initiated a lot, but it was all stuff that we've talked about, so I don't need to bring it up. Thank you. Okay, Clerk Slavin. Okay. We'll start with the show. Uh, this past week, there was an opioid conference in Plymouth. Uh, they brought a bunch of people in. Uh, they have basically said that they, all the communities in Plymouth County, in Plymouth area, I'm not sure if we are included, have uh, basically drug and needle collection boxes at police and school buildings. Uh, they're looking into this deer camp for kids, mock trial program for kids, where they bring the kids in and they basically see what happens. Um, Kids get hooked due to athletic injuries where they're given opiates for pain. Uh, they have what they call a handle with care program for kids exposed to trauma. It's the first time I've watched and listened to explanations of how uh, children are affected by trauma and what it does to them. They have what they call an ACEs program. And ACEs means adverse childhood experiences. Uh, parental uh, separation or divorce. 83% of the kids have ACE issues that came to the court because uh, the court actually can uh, track this and they're allowed to accumulate the information but not you know, the individual person. So that was, you know, that number alone was kind of frightening. Uh, growing up in poverty increases probability of exposure to ACEs. Living in motels, which we've all thought about, is another area which causes the same problem. Um, Warham has major concerns as it relates to ACEs and family situations. Also, it's uh, on these programs, it's best to keep the use in school. Zero, zero tolerance results in negative behavior. Uh, you throw the kids out of school, it's not helping. If you keep them in school, you have a better chance to control things. Um, there's a thing called trauma sensitive school.com. It's a domain for possible changes. And Plymouth County is getting funding for these issues that will be available to our schools. So we probably should, if uh, the school department doesn't know, you should probably get a hold of Mike and let them know that there, there, are, there are actual funding grants coming available. Uh, today at the, uh, in Boston, there was uh, an announcement by the Lieutenant Governor, which then the Governor, after we left the building, did the announcements on a bunch of changes for opiates issues as far as funding. Um, there was, I guess, you could have a doctor and you could have a clinic uh, treating the same person. There's no linkage back and forth as to who's giving which drugs and how much. They just passed something today, basically a bill, that that has to all be linked together. They're gonna keep very tight control of how much stuff is actually you know, put out. And there's educational programs and health programs all coming down the line effective today. So it looks as if people are really starting to take this seriously to try and do something, not just you know words. So that was Pretty much uh, a very interesting and well done thing. Kyle Baptiste, by the way, a school officer was there with me and uh, he brought everything back to Kevin as well. Uh, that was worked out very well. Also today, I was in Boston, as I said, for uh, the Mass Municipal Association meeting of the board of directors. Um, and we talked about uh, different programs uh, we're looking to find a, a recruitment and retention program for municipal finance people, a new workforce program for private and public institutions. Um, this is an area where there's a lack of people you know, that are available, so they're gonna start to develop there. The state has finally closed out their state business, but the final report's still not out yet. It's two weeks away. It's unbelievable that we're in November and they're still not there. Uh, and I said, we mentioned earlier that the uh, Mandate requests, the unfunded mandate request for early voting in 2016 has been funded. Uh, we should hear from the auditor on this. Uh, 2017, the revenue increased by 1.4%. They were budgeting for 39 uh, They're basically about $2 million will be required to finish out 2018. Uh, 2019 is an election year. Uh, so one of the things we discussed was trying to get them to give us the $300,000, excuse me, $300,000 million dollars for chapter 90 funding because there is sitting a hundred million dollars that Patrick Duvall never issued sitting in the bank basically Duvall there Patrick. whatever it's not here anymore so. and uh, 
so we're, we're basically appealing to the legislators, reminding them that it's an election year in 2019, and maybe we can get that $300 million that way. Uh, it would be nice if they would also do a bond, which is for several years, so we can plan, since Mr. Sullivan and uh, Mr. Menard have projects in which we're able to get, I believe it's $59 a ton, you know, for the reclaimed asphalt and stuff to do road projects, which is, you know, a price that makes it really good for us to take advantage of. So that came up. Uh, legislative action, just so everybody understands, stops tomorrow in the afternoon. They're done till the 1st of January. So whatever isn't done is not gonna get done, which means very little. Um, there's a health care cost containment bill coming. The Senate's come up with proposals, nothing on the House side. Uh, we already know that the ambulance rate setting uh, has been pulled out of the bill that was before us. But what's still sitting there is uh, the piece of how they reimburse on the ambulance, whether it goes directly to the recipient or to the insurance company. Supposedly, Blue Cross Blue Shield has just uh, signed with almost all the uh, ambulance companies uh, a program where the money will come to them. So this is hopefully what will happen because the other way is, as we mentioned before, you if you're paying the recipient, the recipient then has to pay the ambulance service. Uh, not easy to get money out of people once they get their hands on it. It'd probably be a lot, I hate to say it, but I, I, if it was me looking at this, it'd be a nice income stream. Just call an ambulance every other week and you get a check about a week later. <coughs> okay, so that's there. Uh, there's a lot of piece that's coming up there. Uh, workplace safety bill is gonna be codified to OSHA standards. They claim that it will have no effect to the cities and towns as far as expense, but this could be the first step for public employees which would be our own employees to fall into OSHA's standards. The only nice thing about the state would be eligible for federal grants which could come to us. Uh, Senate Bill 81, which is the zoning bill, which takes away a lot of our rights <coughs> and a lot of our abilities, yeah. is back sitting. We have to watch very carefully because that could be a problem. There could be action right after the first of the year in that. Uh, the records request uh, with excessive requests that's going around the state um, I can't remember which town it was. Um, they had, I don't know, 300 requests from one person. Uh, they finally ruled that that was excessive, the first one, and, to, and basically shut it down so they don't have to answer that. That's the first one they've actually gone ahead and done something. There's a bunch of things on climate change <coughs> that they're looking at. And again, if we have anything internally we want to do with climate change, uh, as far as impact and issues, there are grants for climate change coming down the line as well. Augustine. Yep, and they have a thing called community benefit districts. This bill was vetoed, but it's sitting back there again. It's basically in business improvement districts. Oh. Not, another piece that could be used for the town of Warham as a benefit as well. Um, the financial situation through October, the town of uh, the state is $205 million over benchmark which is a drastic change from last year. So right now the, the numbers look good. The uh, unemployment for the state is at uh, substantially below the, the, you know, the federal average as far as <coughs> what goes there, the money's coming in, business, et cetera, employment numbers, everything is way up. The state is, is ranked number one on almost everything right now. So everything is going well. So we'll cross our fingers. Uh, the, go the governor and stuff are still going to be conservative about doing things, even though everything looks right. Uh, the other piece that we're concerned about is what they call the SALT program, which is basically the sales tax and uh, local taxes. Um, that's one of the things that the federal government's talking about, not being able to take off your taxes. Um, yeah. That and there's uh, uh, four or five other issues. Um, there's a, there's a thing called issue private development bonds, which is a tax advantage. If they eliminate that alone, that's a $40 billion loss. So, and there's a rehab tax credit is another issue. Historic tax credit is another possible loss. These things are all sitting there and uh, nobody understands you know, what the real effect would be because it's very quiet right now. <coughs> so we'll have to watch very carefully. And there is a uh, piece there about dropping the uh, sales tax from 6.25 to 5%, yeah. uh, which basically for the average person, that sounds great. But that means there's, I don't know how many billion, a substantial number of dollars that will be lost to the cities and towns. Yeah. 
and we can't afford, unfortunately. So the bottom line is that even though it, for the individual looks great, if you're expecting services from your city or town, you may end up losing substantial pieces. And I already mentioned the opiate. <laughs> and the other piece I mentioned to Derek was the, uh, the state has new business in, initiative on state land that could be used for housing by the town or private industry. So we'll be looking to see if there's any state land that's in our area that maybe we use as something brand new and it's quite interesting. That's it. Okay. <coughs> All right. Uh, let's see. We went through your report. We did the minutes. So. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion to adjourn by Selectman Whiteside. Second. Seconded by Selectman Scaziotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, four zero zero. Good night, Wareham. Thank you. With exclamation. One twenty, one twenty, two forty or so, right? Well, but this was from their end here. Mm -hmm. But I know we looked at that. That's the one that's going to be in primary, or it's going to be in primary? Yeah, yeah. right there, right there. Yeah. Well, it talks about the community projects and who's this year out of the room. Oh, yeah.